be set up, were successful, and if every county in the United States had done exactly that, there would have been nothing that could have stood against us. Do you know that? Nothing. We would have had our contracts, but maybe it's a blessing in skies we didn't because we didn't have the programs. We didn't have the technology and all that maybe to make it work. So we maybe would have been in great trouble. However, I want to bring you up a little bit later on to show you how important and how close what we can do in the days ahead. But I think the toughest thing that I ever faced, and I'm sure there's many of you in this crowd that faced exactly the same thing that I did, uh, when I got that fateful call from the Home Office to be in Bemidji, Minnesota, National Director is going to be there, and I said, glory, we're going to, we won. Now they're going to tell us where to go with those big elephants and those big steers. When he got there that night, before I went, called on the Minuteman system, said, be in my long hall. I'll be there at 12 o'clock tonight to give you the good news and for them to wait for me. And they went. And that place was packed with 400 and some people in that hall. When I got to Bemidji and the director, Oris Canerva, he said, fellows, he said, people started to sell. The holding action is broke. It's recessed. Now, I was going back there to face those people. Think of the thoughts that went through your mind when you went back to tell those people, those of you that went back to tell your people. Think of the things that went through your mind. And when it came in the back door and they knew I was coming in to turn around, you'd think the Savior was walking in. Their faces were shining. They were expecting this glorious news. They went up in front and looked at those people. I said, they started to sell, the holding action broke, three cest. Men's tears started running down their face. Women were crying. They lost. It was casualties, but it was necessary. And so we had to organize more, didn't we? 1967, the most successful holding action this organization ever had and won that one. But the big arm of the government was not going to let you in. I remember in Aiken County, Minnesota, over Mr. Johnson's farm, my job at that time, whole next, go to kind of keep the, keep the faith, baby, you know. Many of you did the same thing. Keep holding their hands. Mr. Johnson said to me, he said he had a thousand gallon bulk tank. And he said, you know, that was the toughest thing I ever did. He said, as I watched that tank get full, he said, I knew I was going to have to dump that milk. And he said, I, I couldn't do it. He said, I called some neighbors together. And he said, we went in a well house, and we stood a milk house, and we stood around that bulk tank, he said. And he said, I reached down for that spigot. And I was going to turn it. He said, I couldn't turn it. And he said, I stood up, he said, and I went down again. He said, I reached down for it. And he said, I turned, I started seeing the milk started to run. He said, and I turned it all away. And he said, I was free. He said, after that, he said, I looked forward to going out there and opening that cock and pit and spigot. That's what's made this organization and the character and the type of people in the fiber. Remember when they said, if we get the right people in government, we'll get this job done? We had Johnson in there, who, they, who was the right person, according to Farmers Union, and I'm a Farmers Union member too. They had Humphrey, who was a champion of farmers. And how many of you remember our good man from Minnesota, Orville Freeman, that understood the farmer, he could feel the soil in his hands. He was Secretary of Agriculture. And we had that holding action one, 
and they didn't even wait until they served the injunction on us. They leaked it to the news media, and when that hit all the papers, that broke their hearts in it. What about these farmers that murdered those hogs? That took those innocent hogs and shot them, and those innocent calves and shot them, killed them and buried them. What kind of people do things like that? People that will throw the milk out. I remember, run the trucks, milk trucks and tanks. I'm not talking tanks with guns on now, I'm talking about milk tanks. And on a given signal, all throw that milk and cream and stuff out. And the businessmen stood there with shock and horror in their eyes. But what did it do? They realized that something had to be wrong to make rational people do things like that. There was a reason. A meeting that we had, that I had in Washington. News media was there, newspapers. It was not NFO that put it together, about 400 people. They were there to embarrass the NFO in a 1968 holding action. The reason I want to use this is, is because it shows you the mentality and why people think like they do. They wanted to find out what kind of a man would be out there organizing people that is out there directing people to murder hogs, because it was in the paper at that time, wasn't it? They were murdering hogs, they were murdering calves. Those are the words they used, people. Why did they use that type of words? To incite the people against a group that would go to those links. I can still see that crowd as they were going to bring those questions out. And just as I see the, the anger was rising in their face, I stopped a minute and I said, what kind of people will murder innocent hogs? What type of people will kill innocent calves? Why are they doing it? I told him, I said, I volunteered in World War I because I believed we needed to save this great democracy. We have got right now the, Korean, uh, the uh, Vietnam War going, and I got two sons that are going to have to go in there. But I don't feel the same way about that war as I did World War II. Why are those boys that are coming back from Vietnam who have their parts of their heads shot off, their limbs, their vegetables for the rest of their lives, why don't we see something exciting, exciting the people against that type of a thing? They're worried about a few hogs, but you hear nothing about those human beings that are being slaughtered. I'll tell you why. They believe they're out there to preserve this great democracy. That's what they tell me. Now, these farmers that are burying those hogs, they're shooting those hogs and those calves, are doing it because they believe that they're preserving the democracy of this great nation. But what disturbed me was that I didn't see any concern for those boys that come back in that shape, but only concern for those hogs. What did that remind me of? What does it remind you of? Takes you back into the scriptures, doesn't it? Do you remember that when Jesus came to the tomb and there was this demon-possessed man who was tearing chains and bleeding? And he commanded the demons to come out of him, 
and the man was set free. And then the demon said, let us into those hogs. There are a couple of thousand hogs out there on the hillside. And the Lord commanded the demons to go into the hogs, and the hogs ran into the lake and drowned. You never seen even in the scripture that they rejoiced that the man was set free, but they drove Jesus out of the country because they lost a few hogs. Do you see the parallel? Do you understand the parallel? It's a moral issue. Now, these things that we have gone through have been necessary, and we can experience from it. And today, we have a system set together. You've heard it, and it's almost become words, but people, it's real. You have a hog program, a cattle program, a grain program, a milk program, and you have now with the ready set thing in the grain and this reserve thing, that if you can catch the imagination of like we did with the Minuteman system, you can catch the imagination, contact the people, we can turn this grain thing around this year without a doubt in my mind. It's real. I'm all out of time. I'm five minutes over. God bless you, and it's been good talking to you. Thank you, Bruno.